This is the third time that I have recorded today's episode because my sound booth just got set up and it's not f***ing working. So I am now currently sitting my ass on the floor of my f***ing closet. The life of a struggling YouTube creator is a f***ing glamorous one. Hello everybody, my name's Tank Runner, and welcome to another episode of Drawing Roulettes and World Building. Today we're going to continue working on our project to create a new Pokemon region. Last episode we worked on the Pokemon you can find on our region's third route. Zephyr, the Blue Heller Pokemon. Frigidy, the Honey Eater Pokemon, who evolves into Ragnarok. And Bushel, the Spotted Qual Pokemon, who evolves into Camiflora. I'm sure everyone here is aware of how stone evolutions work in Pokemon. You use the correct stone on certain Pokemon and they evolve, simple as that. Some Pokemon have more than one evolution and which one they turn into will depend on which stone you use. We're going to add more Pokemon to the region that require a stone to evolve in the future, but today we're gonna to be covering one Pokemon specifically. Zephyr, the environment themed Pokemon that we created last month, last month, Jesus Christ. Sorry guys, I have been busier than I thought. But before we jump in, I want to kick us off with a few updates and some world building. So if you're not interested in that and you just want to skip to the part where you get to see all the adorable monsters, here's a time code for that. First up, I want to thank everyone who made it to the collab stream I did with Deadbed Spread. For those of you who missed it, you can still find it on my channel, check it out. But if you just want the Spark Notes version, me and Deadbed Spread are planning to do a collab video together in the nearest future, but we were having a hard time coming up with an idea that we wanted to do that would also be interesting and entertaining for both of our audiences. So we decided to stream the brainstorming session, if you can call it that. Oh no. We're inside my brain. <laughs> Ah, uh, yeah, now I'm like a go-go dancer. This is, uh. <laughs> hey, so real quick, while you're uh, dead, before you come here, can you, uh, mm -hmm. can you put just like a bunch of stacks of stone in my pocket, please? <laughs> <laughs> what the oh, fuck are right you? Hey, what are you? Look at me. What is? <laughs> oh, look at its face! <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Oh, what did they do to you, my guy? Little buddy. Dude, they're, surround they're surrounding you. Oh, no, is that bad? What they does your heart tell you? My heart tells me that they're just ugly and misunderstood. They're my friends. <laughs> you guys want some fish? God, this guy got really close to me when I took out this fish. That reaction was so pure, <laughs> dude. <laughs> I've never seen this weird-ass thing before. They look yeah. like Super Meat Boy's, like, half-dead grandfather. Oh, my God, they do? Like, look <laughs> <laughs> I <don't know. laughs> Everyone came together to have a good time and pitch ideas to us about what they'd like to see us make. And I think we finally have something, so look forward to that. Let's take a minute to do a recap of Zephyr. Zephyr is one of the most adaptable Pokemon ever discovered. It's down coat, allowing it to deal with any harsh environment with ease. Because of this, Zephyr are regularly used as service pets all around the world, aiding humans in a myriad of ways, ranging from farm work like protecting and herding livestock in the dry heat, to search and rescue teams in wet and freezing temperatures. The important bit of information to know about Zephyr is that its type changes from normal to either rock, ice, water, or fire, depending on the weather or what rock it's carrying. Not to be confused with stones, those are apparently different. Zephyr has the ability to change the weather through the use of its moves that share the same typing, making it a slightly better version of cast form since it doesn't have to waste turns doing so. Sorry, buddy. But there was one extra step for Zephyr that we haven't really talked about yet, its ability to evolve when given an evolutionary stone. When given either a Moonstone, Ice Stone, Thunderstone, or Sunstone, it will permanently take on either a Rock, Ice, Water, or Fire typing. All of those evolutions are still connected to different weather conditions, but are completely new Pokemon. Unlike Zephyr's temporary type changes that just give it an alternate color scheme. And just like Zephyr, these evolutions have the ability to temporarily alter themselves as well. Depending on the weather or what rock you give one of these evolutions to hold, it will change them into a dual type Pokemon. For example, if you used a Moonstone on your Zephyr, turning it into its rock type evolution, and then gave that Pokemon an icy rock to hold onto or threw it out during the hail condition, its color would change and it would become a rock ice type. Don't worry, it'll make sense in a minute. Since we just used it for our example, let's jump in with Zephyr's rock evolution. To make Zephyr evolve into this form, you'll have to use a Moonstone. I know a Moonstone seems like an odd choice, but there wasn't really a better option here, and I'd like to stick with what currently exists instead of making up new mechanics and items.
Litho-9, the evolved form of Zephyr. Zephyr, who are raised in the mountains, are usually turned into Litho-9. Rangers that work up in high altitudes are frequently accompanied by Litho-9. They are the biggest and strongest of Zephyr's evolved forms, allowing them to be ridden in dire situations. This trait, combined with their amazing tracking skills, makes them a perfect match for those who look after the safety of people and Pokemon alike, who travel through mountain passes, canyons, and uneven terrain. It's also not uncommon to see Litho-9 being used in badlands and deserts to keep things like tornadoes and sandstorms in check. Every time I add new Pokemon to my roster for the region, I keep track of what types they are to make sure that I have a decent spread and to make sure that I don't add too many of the types that I believe should be rare in my region. The numbers aren't going to add up because of Pokemon with dual typings, but our three most common types are Poison with 9, Normal with 13, and Water at 15. All the types that I figured would be pretty high considering the layout of my region and what it's based on. The three rarest are Steel with 3, Psychic at 1, and Dragon also at 1. With all that said, let me know what you guys think the region needs more of in the comments below, and I'll be sure to cover that area in my next upload. Cryo-9, the evolved form of Zephyr. Zephyr, who are raised in cold and freezing climates, are usually turned into Cryo-9. These Pokemon are unaffected by dangerously low temperatures and other hazards such as slipping on ice or sinking into unpacked snow, allowing them to move through the cold with ease. In situations where Cryo-9 work with search and rescue teams, they are able to find those who are lost during blizzards with minimal effort, and once found are able to warm those in need until the rest of the team arrives. Enjoying the video so far? Then why not like, share, and subscribe? It's free, and in just a few clicks, you can help me grow my channel almost immediately. And if you're a really big fan, why not check out my Patreon to keep up to date on all my projects, to see my videos before they go live, and to gain access to a buttload of extra content that you can't get anywhere else. Links down in the description. Hydra 9, the evolved form of Zephyr with a Thunderstone. Zephyr, who are raised near a coastline, are usually turned into Hydra 9. Hydra 9 are regularly stationed at lighthouses, ports, and public beaches to temper fog, aid ships to shore, and to look after nearby swimmers. It is extremely important that every coastal city have a Hydro 9 at their disposal, as to limit the chance of tropical storms or hurricanes touching down in highly populated areas. A few people suggested the idea of a video where viewers can submit their own fake mon art and ideas, I select a few of them to redraw, and those picked have the chance to have their fake mon added to our region. I think this could be a really fun idea, so if you have Pokemon designs or ideas that you really want to see redrawn by me, want to see shown off in one of my videos, or want to make some designs that might end up in our Australian roster, go ahead and submit your stuff on the Discord in the Tank Draws Your Pokemon channel. If your fake mon is chosen to be in the video, you will obviously receive full credit for your idea and artwork, and if you have a channel of your own or deviant art, something like that, I can give that a shout out as well. Pyro 9, the evolved form of Zephyr with a Sunstone. Zephyr, who are raised in grasslands or out in the desert, are usually turned into Pyronine. Due to their ability to cause warmer and sunnier weather, they are perfect for aiding in the growth of crops, but because of their temperament, can sometimes overdo it. So it's important to learn how to work with this Pokemon properly before bringing it out into the field. Pyronine are also used by bush rangers in the event of forest fires, to create controlled burns and to help rescue anyone who may be trapped inside. 
69 Pokemon down. Nice. 82 to go. How do you guys think I did? I know I've been teasing this for several months now, but it's finally here. My next upload is going to be the first episode of Caves and Creatures, a D&D inspired animated series. If everything goes the way the team thinks it will and the series does well, we'll be releasing new episodes of that between my other normal uploads until we finish the first season. Shout out to Phantomime on the Discord for giving me the names of today's Pokemon, and another big double dog shout out to my first patron ever, Arkwolf. If you want to keep on top of my projects or be told when I release new stuff, be sure to check out my Twitter or come talk to me over on the Discord. But until then, thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.